bottles, wineskins, and phony King James Bibles. I'm going to take a quick look at something called the New Schofield Reference Bible, the New King James Version. We'll look at that. Uh, I'm going to explain why these are gateway Bibles to modern versions and throw in a little bit about this so-called Mandela Effect nonsense that is uh, just kind of going like fire right now. So I've got this blog post that I did uh, called, let me bring it in here. Uh, it's called Misremembered Bible Quotes, The Lion and the Lamb. Basically in this, in this blog post, I'm just kind of going through, uh, somebody had asked about this, where is this verse, the, the lion and the lamb shall lie down together, it doesn't exist in the Bible. So I point out uh, what the verses really do say and also suggest where this might have come from. You know, if you hear this phrase or you sing it in a song, you just kind of remember it, but it's not scripture. Now, this is plain and obvious. There's no Bibles that have this word. So what happens is all of these guys come out of the woodwork. They tell me I'm going to hell and it's all this weird stuff because I should know better that devils have changed it. There's been time travel and universes have collided and mixed and all of this crazy stuff because of CERN. These guys can't get their story straight. It's just weird. Bottom line is you can't trust the Bible. Same thing James White says. Same thing Dan Wallace says. You know, just kind of a different uh, shade of tin on the hat there. Anyway, one of the guys comes in, and I'll, I'm will i going to scroll down to his post. Guy says, Bottles is a word switch. My A6 1967 authorized King James Version still has the old wineskins. You do not break a bottle by overfilling it. Our Bibles are under attack. And he just kind of goes on and he says that um, there are nonsense verses in the King James Version now. So that's a, this is his evidence that things have been changed under our noses. It's another yea hath God said thing. I'll move this out of the way. So no King James Bible has the word wineskins in it. It says bottles. Here it is. Uh, here's Joshua 9.4 where it says wine bottles old and rent so the guy was talking about the new Schofield reference bible and i have one right here this was published in 1967 and it claims to be an authorized king james version i'll show you a close-up of the title page in just a minute it changes literally thousands of words including bottles so in 1967 somebody decided hey Let's uh, make some money off of Schofield's name and update it. They changed his notes, and then they also decided that's not enough. We're going to go and actually change the text of the Bible, too. So I'll show you. The text of the new Schofield Reference Bible changes all sorts of words, including this verse that we were just looking at. And here's a close-up. They change bottles to skins, and they change rent to torn, and they changed a whole bunch. If you just look carefully, whoever you are that posted this and is insisting that the, the Bible has been changed, you can see they have these little symbols. And then there's a little note here down here. It says the King James Version actually has bottles. I mean, the text is supposed to have bottles. They've taken their little note and replaced scripture with that. And this guy's convinced that the King James Bible should say skins in it. Now, notice that even though they are changing the words, they're not changing grammar, they're not changing punctuation, they're not standardizing spelling, they're actually changing words, but they still want it to be called an authorized King James Version with introductions, annotations, subject chain references. Oh, and by the way, such word changes in the text as will help the reader. Help this guy think that the word bottles is new or something, I guess. The word is bottles, and I'm... Bear with me for a second. I'm going to I'm going to pound on this for just a little bit. I'm going to bring in some Bible software. Here's Sword Searcher and I'm going to look for bottles. In fact, I'll look for bottle and bottles. We got 25 verses. 34 times bottle or bottles shows up. And what if you're reading along and it's like, "Well, a bottle. They didn't have plastic back then. Certainly it wasn't a bottle. It it couldn't have been a bottle." Okay, so maybe you're thinking glass. All you have to do is look it up in a dictionary, and I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to use this uh, little feature called Study Click to look it up. Webster's 1913 Dictionary. 
It says, one, a hollow vessel usually of glass or earthenware, but formerly of leather, with a narrow neck or mouth for holding liquids. The defining characteristic of a bottle is actually in its shape and purpose, not what it's made of. And uh, just to just to drive this home a little bit more, I'm going to bring in the Oxford English Dictionary. This is the granddaddy of dictionaries. And we'll take a look at the very first bottle, uh, definition of bottle. This is the second one. The first one says a dwelling, habitation, or building. Obviously, this is not what we're talking about. So we look down here to the second definition. Uh, the first part of it says a vessel with a narrow neck for holding liquids now usually made of glass, originally of leather. So why does the New Schofield Reference Bible, claiming to be a King James Bible, change bottles to skins? In fact, skins is ambiguous. You can wear skins, you can write on skins. You know, it, it doesn't even help you with anything to say that it's a skin. Um, well, why would they do that? Okay, well, let's look at what this does in the long run. Why the New, New Schofield Reference Bible editors decided to make this change. And we'll start by looking at some of the other changes. Now, we don't have enough time to go through hundreds of these changes. There are literally thousands of these changes. But let's look at a couple. Uh, let's go to Genesis 3, 5. It says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Obviously, this is the serpent speaking. What does the New Schofield Reference Bible do here? New Schofield Reference Bible changes as gods to God. Wow, that's helpful. Didn't know what gods were. Now it says God. So much better. Obviously, this is a big word change. You can say whatever you want about the King James Bible if you think it's antiquated or you think it has mistakes in it or whatever. But if you're going to change something major like gods to God, you don't have any business saying this is just some kind of helpful update. You're changing the text, plain and simple. They're not fixing printer's errors. They're not updating grammar. But you know what else? Does, what else? The New King James Version does this. This is the New King James. I mean, you wouldn't be caught dead with one of these. You, you've got a new Schofield Reference Bible that you think is a King James. You would never use one of these new King James, but you know what? Same change. Changes gods to God. And then so does the NIV, you know, so this is a modern version reading snuck in to something claiming to be a King James Bible. Let's look at one more. You know, this is, there's this really difficult word in the King James Bible. This is really hard to understand, the word hell. So here it is in the difficult to understand King James Version. It says, therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And it goes on. So what is the new Schofield Reference Bible? This, this helpful, you know, helpful word changes and all that. What do they do with hell to make us help us understand it? Now it's Sheol. Well, that's so much better. Look, I know some of you people out there are like, well, Sheol's this and that and hell's blah, blah. Fine. You, you want to go change and get rid of the doctrine of hell slowly, piece by piece. That's your modern Bible versions. Go get those. But you've got people thinking they have a King James Bible and they change hell to Sheol. You know, what are they doing? The editors of this new revised Schofield Bible, they think they're fixing mistakes in the King James Bible. What's interesting about this change, hell to Sheol, is that it is also in the new King James Version. You know, that one is supposed to be just the King James Bible, but a little bit easier. They change hell to Sheol. It's a transliteration. You know, they they give you a transliteration instead of translating it. But you know what else does it? The ESV. The ESV does this. So you've got a, a so-called King James Bible lining up with the English Standard Version. What is happening? Well, they're introducing modern Bible version translations into their so-called authorized King James Version. Obviously, God's is not the same as God. Hell is not hard to understand. And bottles is not difficult. We don't need wineskins. And there's a zillion more changes that we don't have time to review here. So what's going on? Well, as I've said, they're introducing modern Bible translations or words or whatever into a King James Bible text. And, uh, 
Everything you need to know is written right here into the introduction. It says improvements and further helps to the reader because additional light has been thrown upon the scriptures by textual scholarship. So if you think somebody's just updating the King James Bible language and then they start talking about so-called textual scholarship, what they really mean are all of those corrections and all of those changes in the critical text translations. That's the textual scholarship. We now know that bottles is a bad word, so we can use wineskins. <laughs> Whatever. And the bottom line is they continue to call it an authorized King James Version in the case of the new Schofield Reference Bible so that you'll trust it. Because there's a lot of people out there, they're not going to buy something that says new Schofield Reference Bible with the new, not quite as new King James Version or whatever. Nobody would buy that. But if you stamp authorized King James Bible on your title page, you instantly grab for yourself all of this authority that comes with that. A lot of people ask about this one. Brandon, why can't, why can't we just start using the new King James Version? What's wrong with that? Now, there's a million reasons, but this is, this is a good example. Um, they take the word blood, which has 447 occurrences in the King James, and drop it to 427, uh, excuse me, 424 uses in the new King James. Is the word blood that difficult to understand? They change it to other things. All right, what about the word hell? It's 54 times in a King James Bible, 32 times in a new King James. I mean, obviously they're not just making the King James a little bit easier. They're significantly changing things. Blood and hell, these are serious doctrinal things. You can't just start, you know, ripping them out and say you still got a King James Bible with everything in it. What happens is they bring a King James Bible reader closer to the critical text versions. They give him something that still says King James on there, and then they introduce these switches. Um, so that's why I'm calling this uh, a gateway to the critical text of the modern versions. I'm going to finish with one more example. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6.20. This is a beautiful, beautiful verse in the King James Bible that is extremely prescient, very relevant to our times. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. Note this word, science. It says, science, falsely so called. In 1885, they created this new translation called the Revised Version. One of the things that they did is they dropped this word science and changed it for knowledge. This is the 1885 Revised Version. If you've done any study on Bible versions, you know this is the, uh, where the big push to get this critical text and all of these uh, redactions and all of these changes into uh, Christianity to replace the Bible of the Reformation with something new and different and closer to the originals, they say. So they replaced science with knowledge. So what about our so-called authorized King James Version, the New Schofield Reference Bible? Well, I've got it right here for you. They change science to knowledge. I know some people are like, well, that's not a big deal. You might have even heard it preached this way from somebody with a King James Bible. But here's the problem. The King James Bible has the word knowledge in it. 172 times, actually. It's not like the translators of the King James Bible weren't aware of this word. It's not like they didn't have it in the early 17th century to, to use. They knew the word knowledge. They used it 172 times, but in this verse, they used the word science. So, you know, what's the problem here? Maybe you're a textual critic and you consider what you do as science. I don't know. That might be uh, a bit of a motivation to update the language a little bit to knowledge to make it a little bit more broad and and all of that but see what happened was is you got the revised version then you've got the 1901 american standard version the 1946 revised standard version the 1963 new american standard version critical text critical text critical text remember there's still people reading the king james bible and basically these are getting just left on the on the shelves in the stores you got scholars buying them up but that's pretty much it 
Here we come with the new revised standard, I'm sorry, <laughs> new Schofield reference Bible. And they put this word in there in 1967 after these other critical text, modern Alexandrian translations have decided to use the word knowledge instead of science in 1 Timothy 6.20. And then the new King James Version also corrects the King James Bible, takes out the word science and puts in the word knowledge very scientific process, I imagine. And then you have the 1973 New International Version of the New Testament does it. And then in 2001, the English Standard Version does it. I think you see where this is going. This is a modern Bible translation word. They take out science, put in knowledge. And if I can add something here, if you have somebody preaching out of a King James Bible and he goes to Strong's Lexicon, and he tries to define science by saying that it's the same as knowledge, you got to wonder, why would you preach out of a King James Bible and then constantly try to make it sound like a New International Version? This is a distinctive word in the King James Bible. It's, it's there for a reason. You've got all these translators on this committee that knew about the word knowledge, but chose the word science in this verse. I suppose you think James Strong or whatever, or whoever, Maybe they, you think they knew a little bit more? I don't know, but just leave my book alone. It says science. If you want it, if you want it to be knowledge, then actually grab one of these, New King James Version, and be open about it. This is what we, this is what we trust. Okay, now that I've offended half the people watching this video, I'll conclude with this. There's this phrase in Genesis three one. Yea, hath God said. The serpent is speaking. The serpent is casting doubt on God's word. This, this is the process. Yea, hath God said. Look at this. Uh, bring this back up for, for a second. I mean, look at this. We have a very clear example of people, they remember something that they think is scripture, but it's not. You know, the, Isaiah eleven six, But the... The attitude is, yea, hath God said. Did he really say that? There's all of this doubt. And uh, by introducing these, these switches in the New Schofield Reference Bible, even if it doesn't move somebody to go and get a New International Version or the New American Standard Bible or whatever, where you move from just doubting a word here and there to completely taking things out, removing uh, our Lord's deity from verses and things like that. Even if it doesn't go that far, it does introduce uh, doubt because here we have somebody who is certain that the, the, the real King James Bible says wineskins in it. You can go look at replicas of the 1611. It doesn't say wineskins anywhere. It says bottles. So you got all these people who they can't even recognize a real Bible. They, they have one of these. It's got all these changed words in it, and they can't even recognize a real Bible now. This is the result of this, yea, hath God said, attitude towards Scripture. And it's, it's gotten to the point where you can, run a, you can run somebody to a Bible search with software, which will show you exactly where these words appear and which words don't appear, but they won't believe it. They're, con they're convinced that these things are like they're convinced the lion will lay with the lamb is actually scripture, even though you can't find a single Bible anywhere that's ever had that. Yea, hath God said.